What's up, everybody? Welcome to Formlessness, the show that's always being. Um, still got a fucked up mic this week, but uh, just bear with it uh, because it's time for a new update on what is going on in the world as filtered through my individual experience and communicated using the most universal language that uh, my brain can process. So last episode um, I recorded from Joshua Tree, California, or more specifically 29 Palms, which um, I later found out after leaving there that the largest mine, I don't think it's a lithium mine, but it is a mine for battery components is uh, at that location of that city where I was staying. And that gave me a lot more context as to why I was feeling the way I was feeling down in that spot, because Um, That was the land of desert where uh, even the dogs are evil um, through lack of resources and want and need. Really a uh, place where batteries are being sucked. Uh, People's batteries, uh, life force itself is being harvested. So uh, I just wanted to quickly touch on that before getting into the present subjects of this episode. Um, I am in a hotel room, and I was contemplating driving somewhere where no one can hear me uh, to record this, which is pretty funny that I would go to great lengths to be in a place where someone can't hear me in order to record a public transmission of something. And, um, yeah, that is evidence of where we are at this current point. I'm in the Pacific Northwest right now, and things are, I believe, at their most dark, their worst spot in terms of social conditioning um, where Portland is a vampiric uh, uh, hell hole and I don't know I kind of drove through southern Oregon and central Oregon and it seemed a bit better I didn't really spend any time there but Um, Portland is definitely classic hell, um, and Washington is an interesting place where I'm, which is where I am right now. And the, I'm, I'm basically working up to being able to talk about the actual content of this episode, but because there are so many people who are perceiving me without, with all of their belief systems and judgments and ideas and concepts, I am working up to the point of being able to speak clearly and explicitly in my own energy because being in one's own energy has been conditioned to be not allowed in the society. And someone who is expressing autonomous freedom is attacked um, from all angles and all directions. Um, and that's kind of what I'm going to get into and, and how that has been happening over the last few years and how um, it's coming to an apex at this nadir of light to um, facilitate the flipping of the coin onto the other side. I mean these horrors and evils have been great movements 
uh, and um, education for us as humans to develop the perception and senses necessary to live in heaven on earth and to be uh, multi-dimensional complete beings and as soon as we turn this last corner um, that will be created and so what's happening now at this point is all of these belief systems and uh, hierarchical good and bad uh, right and wrong ideas are so at the forefront uh, 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 of our, on a razor's edge of reality and they're being used and they're coming through in a way that is very control based very uh, fear based very much um, you know an idea of you're either good or you're bad you're either accepted or exiled and um yeah being in washington is an interesting place for this because this state has a great awareness and also a kind of serious identity so people have taken this stuff seriously and have worked over the past few years to create a functional ecosystem within the larger uh, country status quo control, which has worked, um, but like anything, if you are reacting to a fucked up system, that's not going to transcend the boundaries of that fucked up system. So that too needs to change, and that change needs to happen now over the next three months. So what I'm going to talk about is um, some stuff that is very scary and upsetting to me. So over the last two or three years, as a person being a um, self-fulfilling, self-loving person who has chosen to validate my existence through my own creations um which is a bit of a slippery slope essentially because it is the ouroboros the snake eating its own tail um where you don't want to be self well okay so basically over the course of the last few years i've gone through every kind of social exile possible and what I'm getting to, so so a couple of years ago, it was that I'm a murderer. People were trying to say I'm a murderer. Um, <laughs> uh, and then it was like people saying I'm a rapist. Um, and now people are trying to pin me as a pedophile. And this, as you might imagine, is very upsetting and very scary for me. And it's also something that's kind of close to my heart because I am, my life is kind of adjacent. My life experience is kind of adjacent to this. And I've talked a lot about um, the need for South and North American cultures to integrate their knowledge and awareness in order to um, create this global cohesion of humanity. And I still believe that's the main necessity that needs to go on right now. But um, in regards to this pedophilia stuff, which has become a very uh, major topic on people's minds, it seems, um, this has to do with the Ukraine-Russian conflict, which has gone out of the mainstream awareness um, and kind of been swept under the rug it seems over the past few months and this much like the necessity of south and north america to integrate awarenesses the and and that having a key to moving forward in time um, the ukraine russian conflict also is metaphorical for this sexuality, shame, uh, evil issue. So 
um, the reason I this is very close to my heart is because I am Ukrainian, uh, quarter Ukrainian, and I've experienced this my whole life firsthand in the sense that, uh, how should I talk about this? So I guess I'll, t- I'll say the solution first. So the way I see things, the Ukrainian culture is a kind of Goldilocks zone of the Northern Caucasian evolution, where instead of the cold, power dynamic, laden, potentially narcissistic Russian culture, and the, yeah, I know there's narcissists in the room, in the, in the vicinity. Um, sorry, I'm just saying that to the people around me um, who are doing some fucked up shit with their vibrations. But anyway, um, so you have that, the Russians who are, who can, you know, that culture can potentially lead to those sort of downfalls. And then you have the UK, the United Kingdom, which can have other downfalls, which is potentially being too circular, too incestuous, too, um, Ident- to uh, family identity tied. And this is just me talking from a purely metaphorical artistic standpoint um, based on my ethereal musical understanding of the world. So just take this as artistic metaphor. And if you, if you have ideas about you know tangible scientific evidence to back this up or to refute this, I'm definitely interested in hearing those opinions. So what I feel is that the issue now that has become parallel in importance to the South and North American integration is the integration of this sort of sexual shame dogma uh, problem, which mainly is a masculine issue because many women may not realize the level of danger associated with sexuality for men. I mean, women uh, have an entirely different experience in this regard, which allows them to be much more integrated and open with the source of life energy, which is sexuality, which goes beyond the concept of human uh, uh, dogma and is literally the creative force that generates life. And so this integration and this clarifying, you taking this, this piece of energy which exists in the world of sexuality and clarifying it to allow it to function purely is what is very necessary and needed. And this is what the Ukrainian culture has developed. And much like my uh, experience of attempted uh, social extradition and the Ukraine-Russia war and the Hamas-Israel-Palestine-ish and the Southern North American thing, there are these forces that are do not want time to move forward. So they are trying to remove the information that allows for the integration of global consciousness, which results in world peace and equilibrium of resources for all beings. So essentially what has gone on is that this, this is what I see in my day-to-day experience here in the Pacific Northwest, which is, which is very, I mean, at this point, this area is so interesting. I'm going to do a little bit of a tangent here and talk about this, and then I'm going to come back to wrapping up the, uh, the, the putting a bow on the golden key of uh, love and self-acceptance and removing the distortions around what sexuality is and how it relates to uh, us as people and us as families and all this stuff. So keep that stuff in your mind, but I'm going to talk about for a second the 
fucking funny thing about the West Coast because it seems to be such a important fucking global shit. And yet it's basically an area where the network of information is unbroken. At least in the Pacific Northwest. Because there's this huge, large mushroom uh, network underground, and it's like this uh, rainforest, and this is what happens in a rainforest. It's this, this, this huge network. And yet, because of the uh, countrywide, global-wide scams that have been created to maintain hierarchical control structures, this area has become, this network has become extremely uh, constricted and limiting where the interconnected information transfer between the populace is used to destroy itself because this uh, appropriation of information is being conditioned to have a conditional response. So that means you get information about someone from their the way they look, the way they act, the way they speak, all this stuff, and that goes into your mind, into your network of interpolated patterns, and then you would associate a concept of meaning to that. And those things are cool because it's cool to feel a sense of alignment with others where you're seeing what I'm seeing, we're having this shared experience. So everyone has their own uh, perception and yet it's also cool to be connected in a way. Um, And that's what this area feels like, very connected in that regard, Um, mostly due to the environment. Um, So instead of this being a shared experience of interconnectedness, which is validating and life affirming, these networks of understanding go to the individual who is conditioned to have a response of this is right, this is wrong, this is bad, this is good. I am, you know, the status quo is very much, I am at odds with everyone around me. I, I have to establish some sort of survival uh, reaction to my environment and to my life so that I stay alive. And that is just tearing, uh, everything apart. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, so it's like, I come here, I, there's other places, you know, high desert, other places, Midwest, all these places, maybe I should go to Chicago or something and see what it's like there. But Um, I like feeling the interconnectedness of social, geological, uh, topographical reality and, and how that information moves and how those thoughts are transferred between people through the air. I like that. And yet at this time, that feeling is all of that goodness is being, interpreted and interpolated down to a place of horror, pain, uh, all of this shit. So coming back to, you know, what is it that um, can find its way through all the levels of fear, of social construct, of social conditioning of status quo of control of you know larger forces who have their own um, desires of what the individual human should be and how we should live what cuts all the way through that well the thing that cuts through that is the connection to one's own life source energy the heart and the groin being aligned and connected and speaking to each other on a constant frequency and allowing for um, movement 
that is momentous in, in the sense that like it has momentum and it follows through and it goes up and down big and small without breaking that connection of aligned awareness. And so the Ukrainian culture has this knowledge of this this thing that allows one to feel alive, to feel good, to feel happy, to feel beautiful, to feel um, uh, safe and good in those things in regards to interconnectedness, in regards to family, in regards to intimate relationships. So what needs to be... um, you know, I, I've said this for a long time, but most of the problems come from two similar energies being coupled together and perceived as one thing. And that creates so much, uh, that is often behind the problems of that we see in the world. And so in this case, this coupling together that needs to be um, clarified and correctly perceived is the idea of sex as the physical act and sex as the universal creative force. And so I've been being um, accused and being, people have been trying to like Basically, people are like doing whatever they can to try and get me in trouble so that I go to jail or get killed or stop existing because it's really painful for people to see someone who feels good about themselves and feels free to move in the world when they don't. And the silly thing about this is that my entire existence is trying to help these people, help everyone to... Uh, lift themselves up into freedom. And yet, pretty much 90% of people right now are very proactively and explicitly uh, trying to get me whacked. So, I digress. But what... Sorry, I did get a little bit lost in my um, sort of... uh, frustration at this and I don't want to create that more by speaking about it but it has been my experience so getting back on track the thing that can cut through all of the government control is the this connection to one's own okay so basically what I was saying is like there's this idea that any sort of feeling good sexual energy has to be related to the physical external act of having sex with someone. And again, any European country for the most part, well, not any, but most European countries know this and have this figured out hundreds and hundreds of years ago where I can use my own sexual energy to generate a positive self-image for myself that, and this is the problem, it's like this ability is being broken through by this coupling of concepts where people are trying to do this men specifically women a lot of times don't have this cultural problem in the united states but men very much so are taught to feel very afraid and very ashamed of being in this energy because it culturally gets um codified into these horrible concepts pedophilia rape uh creepiness whatever But the funny thing is being able to have that clear awareness through those things um, creates the exact opposite effect where when one is not allowing their own sexuality to generate a self-image that one is pleased with, you know, um, and, and someone is getting caught in that cycle of shame and fear that's very much precipitated by the cultural standard, then it creates things that do seem unhealthy, that do seem wrong, or are wrong, very much so. So how does this play into um, 
family and social dynamics. Well, in the Ukrainian culture, in the Russian culture, let's talk about the Russian culture. The Russian culture has this sort of hierarchical, uh, conditional, energetic perception, which does oftentimes result in this idea of young girls being bred to be sexual uh, objects and that cultural uh, um, responses there where then girls are wanting to, being taught to want to develop themselves in this way. The Ukrainian culture has that sort of information of sexual energy dynamics but the purity is still there. And the reason that, is, that it's still there is because of the family. Because in the Ukrainian culture, being sexual, quote-unquote, around your family... Now, I, again, saying this in America is not going to be perceived correctly because the concept of sexuality is not distinctified between the internal energy and the external act. And this is the problem. So being able to understand yourself as a one autonomous person who is generating your own sense of um, feeling good energy and the energy that you're generating from within yourself from this place of love and creation, which then stimulates and motivates a cell, a positive self-perception, a, an empowered um, view where you, you feel good about yourself and then you feel like, oh, I deserve to talk to this person that I'm attracted to or I deserve to say this thing that makes me feel good. And most of these things, again, it's different for women in this culture, unfortunately, and that's another reason why things are wrong is because there are these gender-specific conditional... The issue is that there's this conditional uh, shit, and this is just... It's so far along that it's going to break any second, any day, where there's, n there's no reason to have this... Uh, horrible perception of like I'm going to be super aware of everything and and again well again I guess this this period is is appropriate because it's taught people to have these kinds of perceptions so quickly and so much more on mass than it was um you know any amount of time ago like now basically everyone is aware of so many dimensions of things, has such a keen psychic perception of ethereal energy forces. And that's wonderful. But this period of learning through conditional fear has to end because it just fucking turns time backwards. It creates all this... Everyone, everyone hates themselves, essentially, because everyone is conditionally liking or hating other people. And that's never going to work. So coming full circle with these things is necessary. And the key for this in this moment in, in the United States is with sexuality. So in the Ukrainian culture, someone can feel good about themselves, can be in their own sensuality. I guess this maybe is a good term that we can use now and the difference between sensuality and sexuality well again it's still not even really true but what i'm trying to say is that in the in, in the ukrainian culture um sen sexuality is not dogm dogmatic within the family in the sense that i'm what i'm i'm not saying that people are having incestuous sex with people in their own family but People are feeling good about themselves sexually in their own autonomy around their family, saying like, oh, I, uh, I, uh, this is attractive to me um, in a way where I've talked about this with gender roles where like women can 
give themselves compliments and feel good together sexually without it being gay. Whereas men, there's less room for that, although that is also moving in the right direction where that is, there's more space being allowed for that to happen without that stigma getting in the way. And it's basically just like these stigmas that are creating fear and creating a false perception where this is how it works for me, where I feel like whenever I'm out in public recently, I naturally exist in this way where I use my energy to create a reality around me based on my following an alignment of myself, following something that feels right to me. And this is perceived, this is, I don't experience it as sexuality whatsoever because I'm using my, it's not, it's, it's, it's tough to talk about, but I'm just, I'll just share my experience and maybe this will help. I'm not experiencing anything sexual. I'm experiencing generating energy, but then people are perceiving that energetic power as sexuality because it is the act of creation which on a universal perspective is sex but it has nothing to do with humans having sex or me viewing someone sexually or anything like this um and this sort of differentiation between how we perceive this energy is what's needed to not only allow people to feel good about themselves but to not feel like there is this conditional barrier of what is right and wrong and what is accepted and not accepted because um i mean this is a lot essentially for the current zone that i'm in to be able to understand but um yeah because it's very much like if i really talk about things even more openly I still feel that the status quo will um, just pin this uh, concept of of me, of me being a sex offender, essentially, by saying how I really feel in this environment, which is, which sucks. So, um, yeah, um, I don't feel like, Let's see. Let's see if I can, if I can, bring around another bit of real information before I go here. Um, I guess. A a clear and concise way to think about it is like if everyone is naked all the time. Let's say that you you go to a coffee shop and instead of people wearing clothes, everyone is naked. No matter what your age, your gender, everything like that. There's this immediate fear response to the conditioned populace of this area of like that's not that's not cool. That's wrong, and yet this this is the point of this that reality actually creates the exact opposite effect where sexual energy is so much more healthy and there's such a clear boundary between what people are doing with their energy that it is not only is it healing and clarifying it is much more um safe essentially because my role as an artist and a um sacred clown is to look at the taboo to go in the direction that people don't want to go in and i very much find myself in this scary place where this this issue of pedophilia is coming up and i'm feeling myself drawn to this concept and very afraid of talking about it um oh yeah i guess i'll share my personal experience because i do feel um like this is a part of me um because my mother is half ukrainian and she experienced some sort of trauma as a child which resulted in 
my relationship with her not being very healthy in terms of sexual dynamics. Not in the sense that I was physically, sexually abused or anything, but that the life force energy that was being generated was um, m- dirty. It was it was codependent. So um, that is a, I don't know, I guess in some ways I feel um, like that's what I have to share and understand is that dichotomy between the Ukrainians being the culture that has this awareness crystallized in a healthy way and then that very same thing being presented in my life in a way that wasn't crystallized so that I can come back around to bringing that information to myself, my family, and um, the world. So, um, yeah, and I guess also what I'll say is that because of my choices and values in my life, at this stage, at this time, at this period of time right now, I have a very, I'm 29 now, but I have a very young energy, a very bright, light, and free energy. And that makes younger people drawn to me. And I feel like I'm often talking to people who are um, in high school and I'm seeing how people are have this visceral, violent reaction to that sometimes um, of wanting to essentially wipe me off the face of the earth for doing this or being very uncomfortable. And yeah, that's maybe a good um, a good um, not evidence, a good. Um, fucking a good image of how these energies work where it's like essentially being having good vibes is okay and it is not wrong or evil to love yourself and accept yourself and feel good and share that with other people in a way that feels good that doesn't have anything to do with i mean at the end of the day the very at the very at the most explicit level right none of this stuff is 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 bad or wrong unless you are actually physically or energetically manipulating someone against their will and that's a whole other topic because what's happening is like people are very much so doing that all the time with each other um, because it is this dark side of the coin Whereas when the full circle comes around, we can perceive these things, but not have a reaction to them and therefore not hurt and manipulate others around us. And we can exist in our own energy while also perceiving all of these beautiful, subtle energies around us. Um, And likewise, we can share physical space and physical movement with people in a way that feels good and that feels connected without it having this perception of any sort of intimacy or connection is is explicitly sexual um like i can't talk to a young girl (laughs) because that would be evil um which of course also south american culture is very um that's also very relevant but that is carries some weight to it still and so that is a topic for another day so thanks for listening um i'm imagining all humans living in balance and peace expressing themselves freely feeling fulfilled and seeing themselves as a reflection of everything. All right, peace.